This time in Goss's Garage, we're going to talk about parking brakes. You see, parking brakes are often referred to as an emergency brake, but I can guarantee you that if you try to use a parking brake during an emergency maneuver, chances are you're going to wind up sliding sideways madly out of control, and you're probably going to hit something. So they are parking brakes. They are designed specifically for parking the car, and they are not designed for an emergency. As a matter of fact, you see movies and so on where they do these 180 degree turns and so on. Well, one of the ways they enhance that turn is by applying the parking brake. And this causes the rear wheels to lock up. It overrides the ABS system on the car and whole bunches of things. And it causes the car to go out of control, especially if you just tweak the steering wheel a little bit, the car will spin completely around and you go in the opposite direction. Not something I'd recommend unless you're a stunt driver. All right, so we have parking brakes. Why should you use them? You should use your parking brake every time you park the car. Reason being, inside the transmission, there is a little device called a parking pawl, P-A-W-L. And what that does is this little lever or pin that fits into a notch on a drum inside the transmission. Well, it's not as big as you might think in, in many cases. And the other thing is, is in between the notches in here, you've got hard spots where it can't engage anything. So if you've ever put your car in park and then taken your foot off the brake and it goes click, 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 click and rolls forward and then all of a sudden goes thump and comes to a stop, well, that's the parking paw uh, riding over some of these bumps and notches in there until it finally slips in between two of them and then you're in park. Well, how do you know that that parking pole is in its spot? You don't. There's no way on earth that you could. So, you apply the parking brake, and the parking brake gives you a positive setting, a positive can't roll. All right, but the other thing with the parking pole and park and so on, if it's not fully engaged, the car could roll backwards or forwards and it could roll right over the top of you. And we've seen some instances of that lately in the news. People getting hurt, people getting killed as a result of it. So it's a good idea to use the parking brake every time you park the car because that way you know that the car isn't going to roll. All right, now, other things that you need to consider. Suppose you park the car in uh, a parking lot someplace and some idiot and let's face it the world is full of idiots these days especially when it comes to how they drive they back out of the space behind you and boom into the back of your car all right now no damage done to the bumpers or anything like that because uh, they have energy absorbers and one thing and another but what you don't know is if the parking brake wasn't set that thump what it did was stress the parking pawl inside the transmission. Now, maybe it didn't do anything to it. Maybe it did. Maybe it broke it. Maybe it weakened it. If it weakened it, you have no way to know when it will fail. And when it does, the car may roll if it's on any kind of an incline. So again, you want to use the parking brake every time you park the car. But it goes beyond the safety aspects. Using the parking brake, it's kind of like use it or lose it because parking brakes typically work through cables such as we see here. Now, this is the outer housing of the parking brake cable. We have a cable on the inside and then between this inner cable and the outer housing is a plastic liner. Well, if you don't use the parking brake on a regular basis, what's going to happen is over time, this cable is no longer going to move. See, this one, we can actually move it by hand. And there's no problem there. But this one, this one has seized up. There is no amount of force you can put on it that'll allow it to move. Well, in the car, you have all of this leverage because of the parking brake handle or the foot pedal. 
you get leverage from that and it puts a tremendous amount of force on these cables. So they'll move in one direction and it applies the parking brake. But there is almost no pressure in the reverse to release the parking brake. So what happens is that you're driving down the road, the parking brake handle or pedal is in the proper position, it's in the release position so the light isn't on or anything like that, but that cable didn't retract like it should and that's keeping the parking brake applied slightly. And that leads to things like what we see here. Here we have a new uh, brake pad. Over here we have one that came off of a car, actually came off of the car with these cables right here. And this is what the one with the bound up cable looked like because it had been applied lightly over a long period of time. It burnt everything up. We had to put a new caliper on it, we had to put a new rotor on it, put new brake cables on it and so on. All of this stuff and every last bit of it could have been prevented simply by routine use of the parking brake. Now, there are two different types of parking brake. One uses a caliper such as we see here. And this caliper has a lever on it and that cable attaches to this lever. And what it does is when you pull it, it moves this lever and that extends the piston inside the caliper. It applies the disc brakes to the rotor. Now, it does that by means of what looks like a brass screw in there. It turns it and moves it out. Then when you release it, it moves it back. All right, that's one method. And in that method, there are a couple of things that you have to know. First, if you're going to do any of your own work, put new pads on it or any of this stuff, first thing you have to do is you have to have a special tool like this entire kit. Well, this entire kit is a unit that as you turn the handle on it, what it does is it moves the center of it outward and then you have all of these different adapters that uh, go with it and these adapters, they turn that screw inside the, uh, the caliper to move the piston back. If you just try to push it back, you damage the screw and the caliper is shot. So that's one way that they can do all of this. And again, if you don't take care of the parking brake cables and use the parking brake, what will happen is all of this mess will seize up and then you got a problem. But now there's a second type of parking brake that's used commonly these days, and that's one like we see here. This uses the inside of the rotor hat, the portion that sticks out, looks like a hat on the other side. This is actually a brake drum inside the rotor. And that may use things that look like conventional brake shoes, or it can use these one-piece systems like some GM cars do, cars and trucks. Anyway, this uses the cable to use linkages and so on to expand this inside the drum and that locks everything in place. So, big thing here is to make sure that you use the parking brake regularly. And, oh, back to that business of the damage with the parking pawl in the transmission when the car gets bumped. If the parking brake is set in that same scenario, this locks the tires so there can't be any force applied to the drivetrain of the car. All of the force is applied to the tires. The tires are rubbery. Uh, the tires are stronger than these other parts and they absorb the energy. So the transmission and the parking pawl and all of those things are not damaged. So good idea both from a uh, safety standpoint and from a financial standpoint to get in the habit of either pulling up or stepping on that parking brake every time you park the car. And if you'd like more information, visit our website, goss-garage.com.